G'day everyone and uh, welcome to Aaron Engineering. I thought I'd uh, put up a little quick video today to uh, show you some of this pulley machining I've been doing. Uh, if you've been following along on my uh, YouTube and uh, social media channels you'll notice that I bought a multi-tool disc sander, a belt and disc sanding attachment for my uh, big large GMF grinder. <clears throat> now the problem was that the uh, the pulley wouldn't fit the shaft as it's, uh, it was 5 eighths uh, of an inch diameter and uh, my shafts are one inch diameter. So just got it uh, squared away in the four jaw chuck at the moment on the uh, on the Colchester Master 2500 and I'm just taking some uh, light cuts here with my boring bar. I was rather concerned about this as I wasn't hanging on uh, to the part with a lot of meat. Uh, I didn't want it to dig in and rip that pulley out of the chuck so I was just taking it a little bit easy uh, until I got a feel for it and um, and of course, once I knew I was confident enough that it wasn't going to fall out of the chuck, I started to uh, work away at it until I could get that boring bar right in there and uh, machine out that webbing internally there. Alright, just having a uh, different camera angle here, just so you could uh, see a little bit more of the internals. Uh, you can see I'm taking a fairly deep cut here, or, or, or a good width of cut, getting rid of that original boss in the cast aluminium. And the chips are coming off there like butter, which I'm quite satisfied with. This is a really old boring bar, it was given to me a long time ago uh, by a very good uh, friend of mine. Uh, Look, I, I wouldn't even know if he's, if he's around these days. His name was Gary Stoke, and I used to work with him. Uh, he was a fitter and turner from Austria, and a very knowledgeable man. And uh, when he retired, he gave me all these turning tools, and I was most, most grateful for that. So I'm just cutting away at that webbing at the moment and, and uh, trying to work my way up to the largest size diameter there. I need to hit the size of about 53, 53 millimetres in diameter. Now I've sped the footage up here a little bit because otherwise it would be uh, machining for you know, 10 hours and I don't think you've got the patience to watch through that amount of video footage. So a little light skim here just to uh, try and get close to where I want to be and uh, what I'll do now I'll use my dial gauge on the cross slide and uh, I don't have a digital readout in this kit. This is where I obtain the accuracy from by using that metric dial gauge. My uh, Colchester lay is all in Imperial dials and uh, yes, I can't stand working in Imperial. I'm a, you know, I'm a metric guy through and through. Here we are, we're doing a finishing pass now with that boring bar and I'm trying to hit that size of 53 millimetres uh, of internal diameter there. I'll pull the tool out now and uh, I'll come in with a telescopic gauge and just sweep that through there and got my Mitotoyo calipers there and I was right on the money. I was really really happy with that. What I'm doing now, I'm just uh, slowing down the lathe and I'm going to pop in there with my deburring tool and just deburr those surfaces there and a uh, big thank you to Live Tools, they sent me that in the mail for free so I was uh, really appreciative of that so thanks to Live Tools. And I had to stick my head in there just to see where I was. Alright, so uh, we can, now that that pulley's machined, I can take that out of the four jaw chuck. And I was rather happy with that. Yeah, as you can see, there wasn't much meat hanging on to that pulley. That's why I was being a little bit careful with it. Uh, giving the lathe a good, good uh, sweep and a clean now, because I need to remove that four jaw chuck and that four jaw chuck was in a sorry state of affairs when I got it, it was uh, quite rusty it probably took me an hour to get it all cleaned up and get it usable again and probably another half an hour to find the chuck key for it which was uh, in the bottom of the box that I had so cleaning up the spindle now and uh, the tape on the spindle and cleaning up those cam locks and uh, popping that chuck back onto the Colchester uh, this is actually a, a really good uh, quality three jaw chuck I believe it's a it's a proper high-speed chuck suited for that Colchester lathe. As you know, the Colchester's got a high RPM spindle in. I think it's capable of 2,500 RPM. So using a couple of parallel strips here, which I borrowed from my, uh, my milling machine, 
I'm just offsetting that slug, that aluminum slug that I'm popping into the three door chuck at the moment and I'll give this a little bit of a tap with a dead blow hammer just to make sure that it's up tight against the face. And once again check that chuck in the three spots to make sure it's uh, the part's not going to fly out and kill me and of course always remember to remove your parallels because they will fly out and kill you. And here we are and uh, just uh, facing that slug at the moment and this was a bit of scrap that I found in a scrap metal bin and uh, someone had drilled a hole through it so that was ideal for me once again we're speeding up the footage here to 300% uh, parallel turning the OD just roughing it out here at the moment once again uh, not many people like you uh, fast forwarding in your video but uh, sometimes you have to do it otherwise you just run out of time and uh, like I said people won't have the patience to sit down and watch it for hours on end okay so I stopped filming for a little while while I roughed that out too closely to what I wanted um, here I was going to nearly a to size fit or you know, a little bit over, a little bit oversized. So the ID was 53, so I was hitting here for you know 53 plus or minus you know 0.05 something like that. Uh, as long as I didn't go undersized, and uh, I knew I'd be right. What I'll do now, I've got a um, an old, uh, well it's old but it's practically brand new, it's a, it's a, a Wilkshire lathe file, so a single cut file and it's uh, specially designed for the lathe and I'll just kick it out of gear here and come in over the top of the headstock and just take a little light skim off there just to break the sharp edge and I could feel that the pulley wanted to go, um, I could feel resistance there it didn't actually start, but I knew I was pretty much on the money there. I think I was oversized 0.05 of a mil, something like that. Uh, I still had a bit of warmth in there. It was roughly at about, the slug was probably about 50 degrees Celsius. The aluminium had heat, heated up while I did all the roughing out. This is an old 15 16s drill bit that I found in the bottom of the box that came with the Colchester lathe, and uh, I jumped on my GMF grinder and uh, gave it a quick tickle and threw it up to the Morse tape of the tailstock and, uh, and fed it right up through its backside here and uh, I knew that I should be right even if I uh, in the video I say that I don't see that one anymore I've got to wear glasses unfortunately it's a sign of getting older and um, and I thought you know even if I wasn't that close with the grinding I knew I wouldn't be far off and I think um, it actually drilled out to about 24 millimetres so like I said, 15, 16, so if I do the conversion there real quick. So 15, 16 is uh, 23.82 roughly as a millimetre. And I think by memory it, it came up at about 24. So I may have been a little bit off with my grinding. Uh, which you can which you can be, which as you know you drill with your oversize if you're not too careful. Especially just offhand grinding on such a big drill like that. I must say the Colchester had no problem pushing this large drill bit through here and uh, as you know it's a three phase machine, it's actually a 415 volt three phase machine but my phase changer that I run over here in Australia has been tickled down for my Chinese CNC milling machine which runs on about I think 380 or 390 volts, I can't remember now, from memory so it's just a, I'm probably down on the voltage a little bit but it, it, look, it doesn't have a problem at all. I'm popping with my boring bar now because I need to uh, bore that internal out to 25.4 mil, which is one inch. And uh, this is probably just a light cut, a, a clean up cut. I didn't put all the footage in there. And I'll turn the lathe off and retract that now. 
Okay, I've set the compound slide up to a 45 degree angle and I'm just going to cheat and use the boring bar. You'll notice that I've started the lathe in reverse here because I'm working on the opposite side. So uh, if you, you know, fail you to do that, well, you'll usually end up breaking your tip. And I'm um, just taking a little bit of a chamfer on, on the surfaces. I'll stop the lathe and I'm coming back to the front side now so I'll spin the lathe forward and just chamfer the internal. Just a couple of millimetres. And for this one, I'll just plunge straight in, and uh, the tool's roughly on, a, on that 45 anyway, so got a nice little chamfer if I was careful. Alrighty, I've uh, put in my drill stock, uh, drill, sorry, my tail stock now with a drill chuck in it, and uh, got a little bit of uh, steel, a bit of mild steel in there, just as a parts catcher, so when I part off, I don't want that part, you know, bouncing off the, the ways of the lathe and damaging itself, so it should, in theory, just fall off there and fall onto that rod and there you go. That's a nice neat little trick. Can't remember, I think I think the old fella showed me that. Um, old Peter pulled me one day when he was uh, showing me some stuff. Alrighty, so we've got a bit of Loctite uh, bearing retaining compound in here and now please note that I did put that pulley in the oven. My wife had just cooked a, a beautiful pasta dish and the oven was cooling down, it was about 50 degrees Celsius. Um, and pop that in the oven, heat it up, and the little slug there, I put that in the freezer for about the same time the part was in the oven, probably all up about 15 minutes, and honestly, it, it went in there like a, a finger in a, well, I better not say that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> went in there quite easily. I just held some pressure in there while it was cooling down. Alrighty, I fitted it all up to the, to the uh, GMF grinder, and I was quite happy with it. Um, it was quite concentric, it didn't vibrate that much, and... Uh, yeah, I, I now have a full working, you know, grinder and belt sander. So anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you now, and uh, thanks for following on, and um, I'll see you in the next video.